I wanted to talk about modifying a JavaScript code programmatically. So what I mean by programmatically is that you should be able to write some other code which takes your existing code as input and um, it should be able to either you know read some information out of it. So it should be able to read let's say what are the variables you are using in that um, you know, file or it should be able to modify that file also. So let's say if you have a default export with your uh, maybe a react component it should be able to change the default export to a named export where you are you know exporting that same thing as let's something called component okay so let's look at a bit more solid example why we even need to do you know changes programmatically why this even makes sense okay now let's look at this file you have a constants file which is exporting some variables like name and value and then you have some other file use1.js which is importing this and consuming the values within it. You want to rename constants.name to constants.username. Just a simple variable rename. What would you do? So you rename it in constants file, you find out which all files is using it and rename it also there. So this is simple if constants is being used or consumed by only one file but what if 10 other files is importing constants now you have to go to all of those files see if it is using name and change it in all the places this is still fine if it is only imported at one level but you could also have nested dependencies so for example if you have something like a index.js which imports constants and exports it as it is so now you have to also find which all file can use constants but which all file might also use index.js so that it's using constants indirectly so this all becomes a lot hard um, when you don't have some help from your editor um, now you must be thinking right I mean if you're using VS code or Atom or any other good editor right your editor lets you do it okay so let's let's look at how uh, you know your editor lets you do it so in fact let's create some files and let's create a new file let's say we use the same code okay so we do this quickly export default constants equal to name and some value which we don't really care about right now Right. All I'm trying to show at this point is that you know your editor has all these tools uh, to rename and stuff but uh, you might not know how it is working but let's look at how you know, what it allows you to do already. So let's say we have this, I say we do something. Yes, we have that ready let's create some other file right we'll save it to say here only um new structures and all i do here is i import constants from constants right which is had we have it just beside this user js and we're going to do something simple nothing complicated console log constants dot name right this is what we are sort of seeing there we have a constants file which exports some variables and um, and then you have another file which is importing those variables and uh, using them now let's say if you want to rename constants.name to username if you're doing it manually you have to do something like put username here copy it save it go to the other file again do the same thing now this becomes problem again because it like we said right you have to find out where all this variable is being used at all right and you know recursively and then rename in all the places so okay let's say if we don't do it manually what tool does our editor offers us right so one thing you can do with vs code is um, whenever if you have like right clicked on a variable right something like this and you can do right click and go to references 
So go to references will take you where all it's being used. Um, you can also do find all references. So that will basically list down which all file is using it. So it is again, you know, like we told, it will uh, find all of that recursively. Um, but what you really want here is, so you can, you know, at this point you can go to all the files and rename it manually. But we still want a better way, right? We should be able to do it in one place and it should auto, you know, automatically be renamed in other places also. So you right click and do rename symbol. So we'll come to why it's called a symbol. Um, but think of it as a variable for now, right? Think of, uh, we'll connect back later at you know, how variables are sort of connected to symbols. But uh, let's say it's a variable, right? So you are renaming a variable from user, and you pick user name, that's all. Now at this point, you know, both the files are unsaved, but you will see it's been changed in all the files that it is using this. Um, so it's unsafe because you now you can sort of check if the current change is correct before um, sort of saving that change and then I go ahead and change it because it looks correct right and also if you are using git uh, ignore some of the changes but now you can okay so we have created the files just now but you know if you're using git now you can also second time check if that um, change is correct before committing it to your repository right so even though it's automatic yeah it's very safe but i would say you know still check it twice before committing that right <coughs> so now we see that okay there is a way you know using which editor let's say in this case vs code allows us to um, rename our variables easily right but how is vs code even doing this i mean they must they must have lost some logic to do this right how are they even achieving that so the answer is that vs code um you know has something called language plugins so it has something for javascript so it knows how to understand javascript you know modify your javascript code programmatically like we saw right now because vs code itself is a program right so it's modifying your variable programmatically and um, you know it should be able to write down the output of the change to other file so let's say um, you know you change your name to username so it has to find out where all name is being used modifying sort of uh, that name to username and write that change to the file so if that is the case right um, again back to the question how is vs code doing this right so if you're already using vs code you are actually already using the typescript compiler api so how it looks for vs code and any language is like this for javascript and typescript vs code has a inbuilt plugin okay so that plugin is running on the vs code side but for any language it's usually a client server thing so the plugin is running on VS Code, but it also has a corresponding server, which is usually running on your local machine. So it uses this TypeScript compiler and you know its APIs to do that. Um, the first step is a TS server, TypeScript server. That's nothing. It's just a pass-through layer. Whichever request is sent from VS Code side is just forwarded to the next layer. And then you have something called language service. Now this is the main layer. Okay. So like you saw. We went to VS Code and did something like rename symbol, right? What VS Code actually did is that it created a query, it created like a request and sent it to language service saying that, hey, you know, in this file, in this position, the user wants to um, rename this symbol to something else, okay? And then you put some string there, that username, and it will send that string also saying that, uh, hey, from name, the user wants to sort of change it to username right now tell me what to do i don't really know directly about the language javascript so you tell me what to do in these files right so language service figures out that okay um, I mean, what are the other files do i have in this repository right and um, where all this same thing like where all this variable is being used um can i modify those strings from name to username uh, making sure that you know the whole thing is safe and it will return back sort of that same output to VS Code saying that hey these all are the files which are affected um, don't really save these changes 
but just you know modify this parts of your file with some other part right um, so that's the language service now it implements like you said all your higher level refactorings that you use so rename symbol uh, go to definition find all references right you can uh, even your auto completes you can even go to a file just from the variable right so if you have a variable you can do go to definition which takes you to your file or if you have an import statement you can sort of command click on your path right the path that is being imported and it takes you directly to your file so all of that is usually powered by your language service and um, just like as an interesting thing language service also allows the plugin right or allows your sort of BS not PS code as such but okay let's say allows this JavaScript plugin to implement a virtual file okay so what do I mean by a virtual file so let's say actually we let's say we get back to the same files right now and go to use.js okay so this is fine both of these files are currently saved to the file system my uh, constants js and use.js but actually let's remove this code okay so right now see we're not going to save the file so that's like this apparent by this dot here um, what we'll do is we'll create a variable first okay so we're going to hello right note that again we don't save this thing to the file system but now if I write foo it gives me autocomplete it tells you what is the value right and even if I write it and uh, yeah in all this tooltip and stuff will also work same thing I can even get the methods so the point being that if you're working on a live file right you don't need to always save it to file system before getting all these you know correct answers from our yeah, from our language service so what is essentially happening is that whenever you you know change something in your unsaved files right VS code is sort of telling language service that hey um, I want you to you know give me an autocomplete but I'm just letting you know that this some of these files are maybe saved on the file system but for this other file it's not really saved so don't take the copy on the file system but rather um, I'll give you the current string which I have um, on the editor right so normally whenever you have an unsaved change the change is sort of in the editor memory it's not in the file system which um, language service will be able to access so in this case it just will give you the current um, content of the file while you are working on it right so that's why um, you are autocomplete and all the things you know work very fast and uh, you know you don't need to save it or you don't need to wait for a very long time before those things come back right so that's fine language service gives you all the higher level refactorings and a virtual um, file implementation so what's the next step so language service internally uses this lower level called TS compiler API okay so language service we saw it implements the higher level things but it must be using some lower level construct to you know build those utilities right so that's you know what is TS compiler API so this is the part we'll go into today okay so let's look at what that offers right what are the low level APIs as such so the first part that it has is called a parser now what's a parser right so parser is let's think of it as something like your json.parse we all use it right so your json parse takes some string as input let's say your json string as input and it gives you a object as output right so it does a like a string to object conversion right think of the same thing for your code okay so whenever you write some code and save it in a file essentially your file contains a huge string right if you have ever read a file it gives you a huge string so your code is effectively a string which is the input to a parser and parser does you know like reads the string sort of tries to understand it and gives you back a object okay so it's an object with a known structure we'll see how it is um, but the good part is you know now if you have an object you can very easily read things out of the object uh, navigate the object 
and uh, also you know sort of modify that object easily right that would be very hard on a string because um, you don't know let's say if you have something like this log of hello right and you are trying to rename log to something else and if you just do a string search called log it might find a lot of things there might be a string which just happens to contain this log right so string modification is usually not very safe that's why um, you need something like a parser so let's look at what our parser gives us let's say log hello is the input and this is you know on the right hand side this is what the output looks like okay so this is a nested object we'll just go through it very fast so this is what is called as a AST abstract syntax tree but you know to not really worry about it it's basically just a nested object in our case okay so um, just a you know structured way of uh, structured way of looking at your code so let's look at what it says um, so our input is a log hello so from our basic JavaScript understanding we know that okay there's a function call we're calling something called log and we're passing an input called hello right so that should be sort of captured in this object let's see so I'll highlight the important parts right so it says that it's an expression of type call expression now call expression okay it sort of makes sense that I have a function call so that might be called as a call expression okay cool um, so now in a function call I should be able to get back both these parts right one part is which function is being called at all right so it says something like um, in that call expression the expression is an identifier called log okay so this is cool right this is what you're looking for at least we have the string log right but it says it's something called a identifier right so what's a identifier so for now think of it as your variable name okay so when it says it is identifier with text log that means that you have some variable which happens to have the name log and okay so we have the function name here but also understand that um, if you think about it right it says that uh, sort of the left hand side of the function you are calling in a call expression is an expression right it, it could have said that okay the left hand side itself should be identifier or it should be just a function right why does it not say that okay if you think about it this part doesn't have to be uh, you know doesn't have to be a variable name directly so if we actually just try to look at your code you can do log of hello but it's also valid to put a complex expression on the left hand side so I could do something like I could just you know I could just define my function here right which is a little bit more complicated left hand side and then I could call it directly right there right or I could have you know um, I could have called also something here right I could have done a let's just say um, yeah maybe something like this we could have called a new class and done something like dot render and could have passed hello right so the left hand side can be something which effectively returns a function okay it doesn't have to be a variable name or a function name directly so that's sort of the reason why it says that um, that in a call expression the left hand side is an expression okay so what's the right hand side again uh, if you go back this is a left hand side this is a right hand side or at least that's how I'm thinking of it so the right hand side has to be arguments right what all input am I passing to my function so it says that okay it's arguments array makes sense we are passing only one but in general we could have passed more than one so it's arguments array and it says that the first thing is something called string literal okay type is string literal and text is hello hmm okay so makes sense so I have a literal string I mean that means that instead of using a variable which contains a string I have literally written the string there and uh, the string is hello okay 
So this is a basic thing. Your parser takes your code as input, gives your object as output, and now it's much easier to understand your code when you're looking at an object instead of a string, right? So this is the first um, part, or this is a basic thing that um, TypeScript Compiler API provides you. Okay. Now this is not the only parser. TypeScript Compiler API is just one of the um, you know good parsers. There are multiple ones out there. So if you are writing something like a Babel plugin, it has something called Babylon, Babylon, whatever. <laughs> and uh, similarly, if you are using ESLint, uh, it uses something else, right? Similarly, there is something called Acorn. So all these um, sort of tools that we use in our build system or uh, for our editing, linting, right? All of them are sort of using um, some parser or the other. You know effectively right so let's say this parser is effectively being used by VS code so yeah this is one of the options and I think it's a good one just um, not so popular because um, whenever you are writing this uh, let's say whenever you uh, usually write we'll go to you know how to modify your code later but when you are write modifying your code you usually want it to be part of a build chain now um, that's good if you're using TypeScript to compile your code, then you can put this, um, you know, transformer. So which is like you're modifying your code. You can put that as a part of your TypeScript build chain, which is easy, but a lot of people might not use TypeScript to build it. So you'll have your Webpack or Babel or um, something else, right? So it's a little bit hard to plug in this transformation into that chain, right? But it's actually like you could do it also. Um, so yeah, the first part we have is a parser. Now, second part is quite interesting. Okay, so it's called a linker. Now, um, this is uh, from what I have read, right? This is probably the part that a lot of um, other parsers don't provide. I mean, some of them provide, some of them don't provide. But um, yeah, let's look at what it is, right? So it says it's a linker. I mean, it must be linking something. Okay, that makes sense. So what's the first thing it does, right? So let's say we have two files in again in our project or multiple files in our project, right? Till now we look at a parser which takes a file as input, gives us something as output. But it's still looking at a file level thing, right? It still doesn't know which all file is importing this file or where all this file is being imported, right? So the first thing that linker does is that it connects all the files together. Okay, it sort of creates a graph which tells that okay, these are all the files in my project, and which one is using uh, which one else. So linker connects all the files together, right? So that's how even when you look at uh, when you did a rename symbol or when you look at VS Code, right? You all the files sort of feel connected, right? Just because you are importing something from another file doesn't mean that you get you don't get all the facilities right you should be able to still get autocomplete from another file that you're importing or stuff like that so linker first of all links all the files together the next thing that it does is in a file or you know across these files right it tries to understand your scopes and variables okay so let's look at this example we have a foo declared uh, and set to some value in the outer scope. We are getting, again creating a new block scope and again declaring another variable with the same name foo, right? Foo again changes to some other value and again if we come back to the outer scope, right, we should again have the same variable, right, which is in the outer scope. So if you think of it normally when you are thinking as a developer, you know that this is one variable right called foo and this is actually another variable which happens to have the same variable name right you know that these two variables are not the same one so if you modify the foo here it won't modify the foo there right so no that's what i mean by the two different variables with the same variable name so now because your linker is going through your scope and sim like you know scopes it knows that these variables are sort of connected right so this three things should somehow get connected right so let me just go back to my previous slide and show you something so we said that log here like a variable name is an identifier called log right now i said that this is still talking about your variable name instead of your actual variables 
what i meant is if you had a different some you know something different called log in some other file or even in the same file right and if you use that log in your ast it would still say for both the logs right that they are again both are the both are just identifiers with the text log it would say nothing about which all logs are the same variable and which log is a different variable right so we need some way where from a identifier we should be able to say if um, two of the identifiers are the same variable or not okay so that's what symbols provide us so symbol is like this think of it like this okay given any identifier you can i ask typescript compiler api or let's say tsc so you can given any identifier you can ask tsc for a symbol okay and if two identifiers are the same they'll give you back the same symbol so if i ask for the symbol for this foo it says that hey uh, take this symbol with id 1 for the this one also it will give me the same symbol so it will say that hey for this one also the symbol is the same one with id 1 but if i ask the symbol for this identifier foo it says that hey now you have a symbol which has a name foo but it has id 2 because it's a different symbol so that's how i can connect that okay these all identifiers are the same one and uh, this inner one is a different one okay so we'll look at um, how to get the symbol from identifier in like an example a little bit later but um, before that yeah let's look at some more AST okay um, we look at a basic example we are calling a function but uh, we'll look at few more examples like how some other type of uh, like code looks like at AST so this will basically help us um, um, you know in the later part so when you try to write some code uh, you know whatever you see here will be very useful because we'll use the same terms there right and if you look at the AST beforehand um, it will be easier to like connect um, that code like connect the code we're going to write to what we are sort of trying to do here okay uh, okay so I'll tell you what we are looking at currently um, so this left hand side right, this left hand pane it contains the code that you have given as input this is the code you want to analyze sort of uh, the middle pane is the tree structure of that code so it will tell you that okay um, because it's a nested object you saw right it will just tell you okay what is the you know tree structure of the object so what all nodes do you have um, at the top what all does it contain so a tree like this um, it only gives you like the headline so it tells you what all type all the nodes are and if you click on one of them right so i have clicked on this thing called source file it has got highlighted and then the right hand pane shows you the uh, you know properties of that object the details of that node okay so this is not something like new this is not something i have made this is something which is available anyway uh, so there is a there are like actually two websites but this one i'm using is called tsast viewer so typescript ast viewer um, it basically uh, gives you the same thing uh, if it is visible like it's same thing uh, only thing is that it shows you all the properties of you know every object so if i click source file it gives you like a lot of details um in most cases like like for explaining things right it might get a little bit uh too like congested here so i basically removed some properties from here to show you like a just view of the same thing but this is a website that you can use uh tsast viewer i'll put all the links at the end okay and this is one of the website there is another good website called uh, astexplorer.net now so this one is most just for typescript uh, ast like what we want to see here uh, but this is a general one ast explorer so you can basically choose ki, uh, which uh, which parts are you want to use here so right now let's say it says typescript but there are like a lot of other ones like we're saying right you have something called Acorn, Babylon, uh, ESPRI yeah this is the one that uh, ESLint uses and again there are a lot of other ones so you can basically change your parser and see how the same code looks in different ones 
so that's also like interesting because you will see that it's um, it will sort of talk about the same general structure but um, they will be also like slightly different so that might be interesting um, but this is not just for JavaScript interestingly okay so this is like a very I don't know it's a very generic AST viewer so let's say <laughs> If I actually go to CSS, I can write some CSS here and again put some parser, like use some parser here and see what that looks like. So it gives you like a tree structure here uh, and like, you know, uh, and it also gives you like a JSON. If you really want to see the whole JSON, you can see like the whole object here. But um, anyway, this is just for reference. We're not going to directly use them uh, for now. So let's get back to the slide. Okay. So, like you said, uh, ignore this code for the first one. So, how does the structure look like, right? So, generally the top node, like the first root node that you are going to get is always called source file. I mean, that makes sense, right? Uh, it's a source file, right? So, it just says source file, that's a root node. Um, uh, what does it contain, okay? So, it says that kind so this, this is interesting a little bit uh, so it says that okay how do you even get uh, something called source file here right if you remember it gave us a nested object it was nothing like a class instance or something so I couldn't do type of right from an object I'll have to somehow get that what is the uh, what is the type of this object right not as a JavaScript type but what does it mean as a uh, AST node type right so it has some property called kind uh, and this is how enums work in TypeScript. So it says kind is uh, 288. So that's just let's say like a ID. But um, using TypeScript, you can like uh, also map this ID to a uh, string, right? So you, you can basically get back something called source file from this ID. Okay. So because it's just a plain object, um, what you are seeing here, right? That basically means that um, this like PSAST viewer is going through all the levels of objects and for all, all of them getting the kind and try to uh, get the readable name out of it so this one is called a source file uh, what all does source file contain it contains something called text which is the whole file contained okay so here it says you know whatever was the input uh, and this is the most important part now from source file you need to somehow go to the next level right we need to actually go into the code right so we're still looking at a overall node which doesn't really contain anything so it says something called uh, statements so a statements array right now if you think of it that makes sense i have a whole file and normally what we'll have is i'll have some top level statements right my file contains some statements so that's exactly what this is it says that okay I have a statements array where the first thing is a variable statement so we'll look at what variable statement is but you can sort of understand right um, you have a variable declaration here so it's saying that okay I have only one statement which is like this one okay so how does that uh, variable statement look like so so you have a variable declaration here it's a var a equal to 2 I am declaring something called variable initializing it at the same time to 2 okay so this is how the overall tree looks like here um, so it contains like a few nodes currently so we'll start with one node okay uh, the most let's say the gist part of it so it says something called variable declaration and actually because I'm selected this one it also got highlighted uh, in this part okay so it says variable declaration is basically this part a equal to 2 that's what we are mostly interested in um, so what will you what should you expect in a variable declaration right a equal to 2 means I should be able to say okay I have something called a and which is being initialized to something called 2 okay we should be able to get back this information from the ASD so your variable declaration now has a name it makes sense okay like what is the variable name that is being created and it says it's the identifier with the text a so we looked at identifiers right so it's basically saying that hey you are creating a variable with the variable name a 
that's all this say name part right but what is it being initialized to so it has some property called initializer which makes sense it's a right hand side so it should be two right so it says yeah it's a numerical literal with the text two so again we looked at string literal it's a string i've written literally numeric literal is the same thing you just have a two written there so it says a numerical literal with the text two so now we know it's a variable declaration equal to two but that was very easy right that was um, understandable now why do we have all these um you know nested structures right we we mostly did just a variable declaration so why the need for all these things um now if you look at it it says that you have something called variable variable declaration list just give me a minute okay so it says that um the parent of a variable declaration is a variable declaration list why a list in this case right i mean we're just declaring one variable right so if you think of it you could have actually declared multiple variables in the same line so you could have written where a equal to 1 comma b equal to 2 comma c equal to 3 that's a valid you know kind of statement in javascript so it's basically a um, you know overall container so if you're if you would have had multiple variable declarations those will be like the child of this declaration list Okay, so that's why you uh, have this like nesting. <coughs> now uh, we talked about symbols earlier. That for a variable, we should be able to get better symbol, or like a more like a technically for a identifier, you should be able to uh, get back a symbol. So basically, when you highlight this part A, right, this part A. It uh, the TACST viewer it also shows you that okay it has a symbol called A and uh, it has a name A sure and it also like your symbol also contains a reference back to where all it was declared okay so it's actually a reference back to the same statement variable declaration so given a symbol it's uh, cheap to find out where all it was declared um, I don't think it contains a reference to where all it's being used. So you'll have to again effectively go through all the identifiers and uh, check if their corresponding symbol matches to a common symbol. But if you want to find out where all the symbol is being uh, declared, something like go to definition, it would give you um, which statement declares it. <coughs> now this is the final S you're going to look at. Okay, um, so this is a little bit more complicated than the last one but um, after this i promise you we'll go to you know we'll try to write some code and uh, use whatever we have learned till now okay so what do we have on the left hand side so the code says um we have a string the number is and we are concatenating the string with the result of a function call right uh, okay looks simple uh, just we are sort of creating a string by using a by using like a common string, uh, you know, a string literal, and some number that we are getting as output from something. Okay, so we think of it as what like a concatenation um, operator sort of right. So what does it look like uh, in ASD? So it says that the root level thing is an expression statement. Um, okay, just after this we'll talk about like expressions and statements and why this is you know it's very odd right you know about what expressions and what statements are but now it's calling it's itself as um, expression statement in fact let's uh, discuss that first okay so um, what's our expression what's a statement and so statement is a whole logical line so this whole thing that we see here is a statement okay this whole thing that you see here, the number is plus square two. The whole, as a whole, it's a it's a statement. And expression is um, every small part of that statement, every um, you know independent block of that statement. So this two is an expression. Square of two is an expression. But this whole thing, right? The number is plus square two, is also an expression. Okay think about it <laughs> what he just told you literally is that okay the whole file is a state like the whole line is a statement 
but as it happens here this whole thing is also expression I mean, like what's the difference between expression and statement right if this whole thing happens to be a expression and a statement also why shouldn't like every line be a expression and a statement also so let's look uh, at the difference so in the bottom you have like the previous code example so we are very going to do we'll just compare how uh, these two uh, lines are a little bit different right so again here this will be a expression 2 a will be a expression right but it says that for the whole thing where a equal to 2 that's a variable statement okay it doesn't say expression because we saw here on the top it says expression statement so then what's the difference between um, you know a statement as a, and an expression so think of it in this way expression is something that can be used as part of a statement what I mean is I could have written console.log of this whole thing I could have written console.log of this number you know this code like the number is plus square 2 that would be a valid thing we do it often right you concatenate some string and put in a console log that's a valid, valid statement um, but I couldn't have written console.log of and then a variable declaration where a equal to 2 that's not a valid statement right so that's the idea that um, if I can take something and put it into some other statement right or think of it as if I can put it into a function call um, as an input Right, then that's an expression. So this thing I can put it in a function call is expression, but this I cannot put it in a function call. So this is a statement. But in general, yeah, statement is something which um, uh, you cannot put like a parent node. Um, you cannot like put another statement above this statement. Okay. Uh, but expression is something which you can take and again put like a wrapper statement around it. Okay. Now that we I hope sort of understand the expression and statement. Let's look at uh, what this code is saying. So we know that this is a concatenation operation. What does it look like as AST? So it says that uh, there is something called a binary expression. I mean, let's think about it. Okay, binary expression. So okay, plus is a binary operator. We know that much. So plus is something which operates on two sides. You have a left hand side and a right hand side. Uh, so, but of course, like plus is not the only binary operator, right? You could have written minus also. So it seems to be like a like a general kind of node called binary expression, which um, which can be used for plus or minus or something else also. Uh, so okay, there is a whole binary expression. Now somehow it should say that okay, the, it's a binary expression, but the thing we have in middle is a uh, plus right uh, it's a concatenation somehow so we'll look at that so binary expression says that okay my left hand side is a string literal we already know what that is and it says that the thing I have in the center that operator token is something like plus token okay so this is where it makes sense if we have a plus token plus a binary expression we know that we are adding or concatenating something and then you have the right hand side so we looked at how a function call looks so now we know that okay uh, that the right hand side should be a call expression because it's a function call so if we expand this um, you can so you can see here so binary expression says that um, okay, this is not highlighted but anyway binary expression basically says that my uh, left hand side is a string literal operator token is this thing in between and the right hand side is again a call expression which uh, we have seen earlier so this is how uh, yeah, this is how uh, you know, addition sort of works one more thing uh, if I actually get back here so we looked at this binary expression with uh, plus operator right but when you assign some value to a variable so if I would have written a equal to 2 I'm not declaring here I'm just assigning a value a equal to 2 then that would also look very similar so we'll have a binary expression just that the token in between will be something like a equals token right so it's like you have equals in between and two things on two sides so that's how uh, uh, assignment looks like in TypeScript ASP 
okay so we have gone through some ast right but till now this is all theoretical we are just like giving something as input getting something as output and trying to understand how it uh, makes sense right how they are sort of connected uh, if you think logically but we have still not seen any code right but <laughs> so so let's go into that um let's start with a easy example uh that okay we we saw that we have like a whole tree let's do something easy uh, let's go through this whole tree and whenever we find something called identifier basically if we whenever you find a variable name we'll uh, write it down to console okay. we'll console log that yeah uh, just this is just to show that you can uh, traverse through your whole ast easily okay so uh, for example like if this was a piece of code that was input um you know it will just console log all the variables we are using so foo bar foo two bar all of that okay. let's uh, go to the code so okay so before um yeah so okay so this file doesn't contain the boilerplate code um so i've written just a small web application i'll show you that so like this all of course doesn't come with the, the compiler play directly as such but this is just like a small um, application where i'm showing like what is the AST of the input code that you're going to give and if there is some modification in this AST because of the code we are writing then it will sort of um, show you animation like which all nodes are moving out which all nodes are coming in something like that and this will also show you the uh, change we are doing in terms of the code output right so if this is something like the input um, on the right hand side we'll see uh, because of our modification what was the output so this is just a small uh, web application I've written and um, so there is like some some boilerplate code to get started with using TypeScript compiler API I can show that also okay. so Effectively, this is the part. Now, what do you need to get uh, started at this point? So, you only need a TypeScript as a dependency. But remember, now it's a actual dependency, not a dev dependency, because you want that TypeScript.js to uh, go with your code. You know, if you are putting it as a web application, you want it to be uh, sent as part of the bundle. Or if you're like running it in Node, also you um, want it to be installed by all your users. Right, so it's a dev dependency. You add TypeScript as that. Um, I think, in fact, if you look here for our example, we have a few more. So I'm like using a little bit of React for the demo. But other than that, yeah, this is all we need. Okay, TypeScript. Also, like ignore this one. That's just the web application here. So all you need as dependency is TypeScript. So yeah, back to the point I get code. So this is how you uh, get started when you are writing your code like from the start. Um, there is an easier way also. So if you only want to write a transformer, which is like just modifying your code as part of a TypeScript build chain, uh, then you don't need to create this like create this scaffolding. Um, you can just pass the function which um, does the modification but uh, if you are writing a complete program uh, a complete program like uh, if you have seen something called type doc so what type doc does is that um, it basically takes all your inline code documentation uh, takes out all your type inferences like types of the variables and functions and uh, it creates an external documentation for it so just the idea is that if you don't want to use uh, this logic to just modify your code as part of TypeScript build chain, then you will need some boilerplate code like this. So what does it say? Um, so create a source file. 
So you have like TS is like import TS from TypeScript. Right? So that's all. So you create a source file. Um, it's like a little bit different here, but you basically uh, because we don't really have a uh, because it's running on the browser, right? We don't actually have access to the file system. So we are creating a virtual file and uh, passing with the input code that we have. This is just your um, if you uh, I guess this is just a script kind. Okay, so it's basically like what is your target output? So if you want to compile your code down to like ES5, ES6, that's what this should say. This uh, should say uh, this we can ignore. And basically, what we are doing is this. Once you have the source file, we are running ts dot transform, and you will like give it uh, your source file as input. So this is a source file. You pass it what all transformer function you want to run in it. Okay, it uh, doesn't have to necessarily change your code. It could have been used just to uh, read some value out of it also. And when you have the transformed output, we are taking out uh, you know, the first file out of it so again uh, basically when you are doing a transformation um, you could have passed like multiple files also I think or generated multiple files as output but here we only have one file so I'll take out that file and uh, basically we are showing uh, the stringified form of that um, you know source file on the right if you remember on the way back so that's it uh, so you have to basically create a source file yourself and uh, run a TS transform. Okay, that's the boilerplate code. Now let's look at some actual code where we um, go through the ASP. Okay. So this looks very complicated, but it's really not. This is just a uh, this is the main gist of uh, our code. So it basically says that okay, you have to pass something called transformer with some type. Your transformer gets um, gets some context as input. Not really going to use it. Um, and you are supposed to return a function from your transformer function. So the function it returns a function, uh, and this function will be called uh, with. Uh, you know each file as input because your program can contain multiple files uh, this whole function or more like this function is going to be called with each file as input and then that function is actually supposed to uh, it's not really supposed to but okay now because it has the root node which is the source file um, we can use something like visit node or visit each child and uh, basically for each node we can recursively uh, go through that so in the initial part we do a visit node of source file and pass it some visitor function now this visitor function does something or read something out of the node and then um, it's in charge of like it has to if it wants to go through all of you know it's all of the uh, all the parts inside that node just to again call ts dot visit each child and recursively call like for that node we have to pass itself again visitor and we'll just uh, pass the same context that you receive so this will like recursively go through um, all of your nodes yeah so this also gives you like a, a chance to stop going through all the nodes if, if like you if you uh, if you are looking for some specific type of node and you have already found it um, you you could like ignore going through its inner childs, right? That's also possible. And this is the actual code. So we said that whenever we so if I just show you what you wanted. Given a source file, you want to console log all the variable names. Okay, that's all you want to do. So what are you going to do? Um, we have a different we have like different types of nodes right like you saw you have some statement blah 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 we are not really interested in that so the first part you do is uh, you filter out the node so you uh, you can either you know look at node dot kind equal to equal to something or else you can use this helper function that TypeScript provides you so you can use is is identifier plus the node that you have currently received as input because this visitor function same function is going to get for called for all the nodes 
So you give the is identifier. Okay, if it's is if it's true, then I have identifier for sure, right? So uh, because of this, like how TypeScript works, now it has inferred your type to be, um, you know, uh, identifier. But earlier, um, it knew that okay, generically my type is, type is node, but because it has passed this check or more like a type card, now my node is identifier. Um, so what I can do is let's say ignore this line. What I'm going to do is console.log and uh, node.txt. So for any identifier, your text contains your uh, variable name. Okay. So let's open our console log. Zoom it in. Okay. So if we run this once more, and let's say this was our input code. So you have foo equal to one, bar equal to two. Uh, just to show you, I have also put a string called bar to you know show you that this is not like a string search as such. Um, this bar is a you know string literal, so it shouldn't get confused that bar is a variable name and there is some string literal like it. So effectively, what we have is uh, it should say foo and bar. So that's what we have in console log here. Uh, just for like easier sort of identification. What I did also is that uh, this web app is like highlighting the node. Um, you know, it's highlighting these nodes we have found. So it's like highlighted foo and bar here. Um, but this is like still, uh, still a bit easy example, right? Uh, let's modify this source code. So this thing is like not editable here. We have to go to the file and edit it. Uh, but let's modify this input code and uh, see how. Hey, people. So this video uh, sort of stops here. Um, the recording got interrupted for some reason and also it was getting quite long. So I thought I'll make it into a second part where we'll do completely with the coding part. Uh, we'll, we're going to see like two more examples of how to modify AST and uh, see how it looks in that web app we are seeing. So, Thanks a lot for watching. Um, I'll try to upload the next video uh, within a few days. Thank you.